Can you believe that we're now at the halfway point of the Rings of Power Season 1? Because at the moment, I tell you what, it doesn't feel that way. After last week's episode, it felt like the foundation was set in place and we were ready to move into the meat of the show, but unfortunately I wanted to see a step taken forward, but instead we had a step taken back. And I actually had some hope going in because I saw the episode length being 1 hour and 11 minutes, which is the longest episode of the series so far, but what do they do with that time? Not a lot. Like with the previous episode, this one only showed 3 out of the main 4 storylines with the half foot sitting out this week. I mean, they better not be literally sitting out, otherwise they'll be left behind. We wait for you. Let's start in Numenor this time round, and the Queen has a nightmare of Numenor's demise. We then get a conflict of opinion in the plaza where some of the workers are upset about elf workers and that they say that the Queen is an elf lover. And then the guy with the grey beard comes over and opposes that viewpoint, does a little talk for the crowd and gets them going. And I would call him by his character's name if I actually knew it without looking it up, but I don't because he literally just comes in and offers an alternative viewpoint and then goes away for the rest of the episode. After speaking out of place in front of the Queen, Galadriel gets locked up. And this scene here is a perfect example of what I was saying last week in terms of Morpha Clark's performance as well as their direction with Galadriel that it doesn't really show any emotion in terms of what we need from the character because she's actually having quite an angry rant here at the Queen and she's not really showing anything on her face apart from what's you know below the nose. Like Everything above it is, is just staying the same all the time. It doesn't matter if she's happy, angry or whatever. The eyes always say the same and a lot can be said within the eyes. Isildur gets dismissed by the sailmaster alongside two of the other men and they have a little bit of a spat about that. Gladriel gets told she's going to be shipped back and somehow as she's outside the cell puts four of the guards into the cell and locks them in. I actually had to rewind that part of the episode because I was so confused how she actually got four armoured guards into that cell. Like, how was that even possible? Anyway, after Gladriel's miraculous escape, she goes up to see the king and sees that he's not in a good state at all. The queen who was with the king at the time then takes Gladriel down to see the seeing stone and then the Gladriel puts her hand on said stone and sees the same vision that the queen saw at the start of the episode. The queen is then convinced to escort Gladriel back and actually aid in the fight for the Southland. And that was the best part of the storyline because hopefully now, surely now, that means that the storylines will actually collide and the show will actually pick up the pace a bit. But how are the other two storylines in this episode? Well, Arendir actually gets let go by Adar to send a message to those in the Watchtower. Bronwyn and the group arrive there, but they can see they're low on food, so Theo and one of his friends goes out to try and get some. His friend Rowan does escape from the village with some supplies, but Theo gets caught and actually has to hide in a well after some orcs find him uh, in possession of the hilt. Later on, Theo does try to escape, and luckily for him, Arendir comes just in time, just before he was about to get sliced up by an orc. They get chased through a wood by a large group of orcs and they've actually meet Bronwyn along the way as she's trying to find Theo and then luckily for them they do find a clearing and the sun comes up as well so the orcs can't go and chase them any further. When they get back to the Watchtower, Arendir relays the message from Adar to Bronwyn that if they want to keep their lives they have to forsake all claims to these lands and swear fealty to him. This episode really should have been titled Impending Doom because as Theo is sitting down, the local barsman actually comes over to him to say about what that hilt is all about and that he's actually a true Sauron supporter. And this was definitely the most exciting storyline of the week, but we've still got one more to talk about. And that is Elrond's storyline, which had a week break last week. So what's been happening this time round? Not a lot. We do find out that the dwarves have been mining Mithril. As the mine collapses in on some dwarves, Prince Durin does go in to try and save them. And after Deez's plea to the rocks, we find out that they all do come out alive. Prince Durin shows he has some daddy issues, but gets them resolved to a state where he can be in agreement with his father that something else is at work here and that he's going to go to Linden. Although not so much happened plot-wise regarding this storyline, I still think it has the best characters. They seem to be the most full of life and the most uh, enjoyable to watch actually interact with each other. And when looking at our two lead characters, Elrond comes across as a much more passionate character. And I don't know if that's just because of uh, Robert Arameo's performance, but with Galadriel's cold performance, it's really been an issue. Look, I by no means hate this show, but I think now we're moving into the second half, it really has to start picking up because if it doesn't, it's going to be a real struggle. I'm hopeful once everything starts to merge together, that will give it the kick it needs, but I'm not so confident that this build-up will be worth it. So with the first half of the Rings of Power now gone, what's your thoughts on the show? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're looking for something else, watch on screen right now as I review for Season 5 of Cobra Kai.